I've got a React search app that requests data from Wikipedia using SWR and Axios. It works well, but every time I type in the search input, it sends a request. That's not efficient, and it abuses the Wikipedia API. But we can fix this problem if we debounce the search input. Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today we will debounce the search input in a React app, and I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students, and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. A quick note today, this is not a tutorial for beginners, and I'm going to move a little faster. That said, I will explain everything, and if I'm going too fast for you, remember you can pause the video to look at the code on the screen, and you can download the source code from the GitHub link in the description. And if you want to complete this project with me, I do recommend downloading the source code, because we're already working with an app that's already created. I won't be going over each component. I'm just focused on the task at hand, which is debouncing the search input. So let's once again look at the problem before we look at any of the code over here. And I will drag this over to the full screen once again. Then I need to open the dev tools and look at the networking tab. And so here we've got React Dev Tools loaded in, but I can just clear that out. So we just see what happens when I start typing in the input. And if I type my name, Dave, it has four letters. And you see this flash over here because we're sending four different requests. So there were different results and it changed that as well. That's not great, but also we had these four different requests in the network tab. And even if I delete by backspace, there's another request. And so now it just searched for DAV and we we got different results. That's not what we want. We want to wait until we have finished typing. We've completed typing, whatever we're going to. We can't really figure that out exactly, but we can put in a, a amount of time, a certain amount of milliseconds, or maybe even one second, which is what I'll use today to really highlight the difference. And then, of course, I think you'd want more like 500 milliseconds to really use this. But what we'll do is put in that amount of delay, and that's debouncing the input, and then we'll send the request. And only after that amount of time, that amount of delay, is when the request will be sent. So I'll close DevTools again, drag this back over to the right, and really we want VS Code full screen for most of this. Let's start by looking at the package JSON file. And remember, if you download my code from GitHub, you want to run npm i for install to install all of the dependencies. Really, I've only added two dependencies today. We've got Axios here and SWR. And if I open my terminal, you can see I'm already running uh, Vite here on localhost at 5174. I think you might run 5173 by default, but you can do either one. Anyway, we've got a second terminal window open now, and so if you were going to install the dependencies after downloading the code from GitHub, you would just type npm i or npm install, either one, and it would add all of those dependencies that you need. Okay, after that, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the Axios API layer before we look at any components. So I open the source directory from the starter code, go to the API directory, and you can see I've named this file wiki API. So inside of this file, just a couple of things I want to highlight, even if you're familiar with Axios and have used it several times. One is I'm creating this API here called wiki API with the base URL. And this is the information here. And I'm going to put links in the description if you want to dive deeper into the Wikipedia API because there's really a lot to it. But there's a lot of parameters here. And I just want to highlight that I put all the params. This is a git request. And if you don't specify the method, it defaults to git. But I put all the params in here and we're just passing in the search term to our git wiki search results function. And then instead of what you may be used to seeing like api.git or api.post or something like that. I'm just saying wiki api.request because we're just using the base URL. There's no further URL to pass in and append to this. So just wiki api.request, letting it default to the git method. And these are all of the params we're sending in the URL to Wikipedia. 
Now let's take a quick look at our React components. And here's the app component. You can see we are using state to set a search value and we have the set search value function as well. We pass all of that into the search input component. And then we also have a list component that only receives the search value. So if we look at the components and we look at the search input, you can see that is all that is here is the text input and it is a controlled input. So the value is the search value and the on change triggers the set search value function. And that's essentially all there is to that, which pushes that back up to the app JS, which can then send the search value down into the list component as a prop. So once we look at the list component, we can see how we are fetching that data. So we get the search term here in the list component and we're using SWR. SWR uses that get wiki search results function that we already looked at in the wiki API. Here is something that triggers the request. Now, if we have a search term, we're using a ternary statement here, then the search executes. But if not, this value is null and this does not execute. So that makes SWR great for this type of thing. So we can just put that in here and we're not always executing a request. We're not always sending a request, I should say. We only are if we have a search term. However, before debouncing the input, we always have a search term every time we type into that input. So that's essentially what's going on there. After that, we just use the different states, is loading, error, and then data, and really the data you get back from the Wikipedia API is a complex object. So we're going several layers here. We're looking at data, then queries, then pages. And even once you get to pages, it's a object with a lot of objects inside of it. So even then we have to say object.values and then map over those results. And then the item component just presents those results. And so the only changes we're going to make to these components will be here in the list component where we apply use SWR and in the app component where we have the search value. And so to debounce the search value or the search input, what we need to do is create a use debounce hook. So let's highlight the source directory here, create a new directory called hooks. And then inside of this directory, I'll create a file called use with a lowercase u and then a capital D for debounce.jsx. Now, before I create this hook, I wanna mention that I have another tutorial on creating a debounce function in vanilla JavaScript. And it may help your understanding to also watch that tutorial, and I'm going to link to it in the description. And you can see how React achieves the same thing differently than how we do it in vanilla JavaScript. So that could just add to your comprehension of the whole concept, essentially. Okay, so let's go ahead and create this hook. I'm going to start by importing use effect. And then I also want to import use state, both from React. Then after that, I'm just going to go ahead and do the RAFCE. Well, it's not wanting to cooperate there. Let me see if I can get it. No, I don't, oh, there it is, all the way down here in my list. I need to maybe fix that in my settings. There we go. So now basic use to bounce hook here. Now it's going to receive a couple of things. One is whatever value we pass into it, and another is a delay. And I'm going to set a default value for this delay of 500. So if it's not passed in, it's going to be 500 milliseconds by default. Now let's go ahead and use the state. So I'll say const, and we're going to create a debounced value. And we'll create the set debounced value function. I said debounced value, debounced value function. And then after that, we need to go ahead and just set use state. And let's start out by just passing in the value that is passed in for the initial value. That's fine. Okay, we need use effect now. So here's the use effect hook. And inside this use effect hook, well, let's go ahead and put the dependency array here as well. Now, inside the dependency array, we're going to need both the value and the delay. Let me separate that from the return here just so we can see it a little bit more clearly, or at least I can. Now here, I need to define an ID. I'm going to set this equal to a set timeout. And now set timeout has a function inside of it. And inside of this function is where we're going to set the debounced value equal to the value that is passed in. 
And here we can put in the millisecond delay. So we'll just put in that delay value right there. So we've defined this. Now we need the ID for the timeout that is set so we can also cancel it. And use effect has a cleanup function and that's the ideal place to go ahead and clear the timeout. So we'll say return, we'll have this function here. And then below we'll just say clear timeout, just like timeout itself up here, this is something that's available in JavaScript already. We don't have to define set timeout or clear timeout. And here we just pass in the ID so it will clear the timeout that was created. Now notice I brought this on a separate line and I did the same up here. That's because I think we should put in console log statements to help see what's happening at first. So I'm going to say console log and then I'll say setting new timeout. And then here, of course, we'll put clearing the timeout. So console.log and we'll say clearing the timeout just so we can see what's happening at first. And then of course we can come back and delete these log statements. And now all we really need to do here at the end is return that debounced value. So to sum up what this hook does is it receives whatever value is passed in and we'll be passing in the original search value. And then it sets the debounced value after a certain delay. And so whether that's a half second, like 500 milliseconds, or a full second, or whatever we set it to, we don't get that debounced value back until after the delay, essentially. And of course, every time you set a timeout, you need to clear the timeout. And that's what we're doing with the cleanup function. So it's fairly simple overall, but we're adding a delay in for that debounced value. And now with this hook created, we need to go back to the app.js component and apply it. We'll start by importing our custom hook at the top. So we'll say import use to bounce, and it comes from our hooks directory. After that, we can go ahead and define our debounced value. So we'll say const debounced search value, and we'll set this equal to use debounce Let's pass in the initial search value that we have in state above, and then I'm going to put, pass in 1000 milliseconds. So it will really kind of highlight the delay. It'll feel a little long. I think 500 feels a little more natural. But after that, we're passing the search value in here. And so instead of passing the search value down here to the list component, we want to pass in this debounced search value as the search term. So again, before we try out the new to bounce feature that we have just added, let's once again look at the list component and we're still, we're bringing in that to bounce value now as search term. So we really don't need to change anything here. I just want to highlight what is happening because the to bounce value will have no value. It'll essentially be empty at first. And so it will fail when we get to this ternary and the value will be null and no request will be issued. And that's how easy it is to apply this to SWR. So now let's go ahead and look at our app. Once again, I'll drag this over. Let's go full screen with the application and I'll open up the dev tools. And here we're in the network tab. Once again, in dev tools, I'll clear this out. And I'm going to type my name again and let's look at how many requests happen. I typed my name. We waited one second and then only one request was issued instead of four which were issued instantly after every letter I typed before. Now the same thing when I backspace, as long as I don't stop, no other request was issued. And no request was issued when this was empty because once again, it uh, was not true. It failed that ternary statement. So I could type something like, hey, now another request is issued. And if I just backspace once and wait a second, then a request is issued. So as long as I am in action typing, nothing else should happen. So I could type Jim, for example, and now we have another request and we see all the results for Jim. And Jim Henson reminds me of Muppets. So as long as I'm typing, no other request happens. And then it happens one second after I finish. So again, you might want to lower that in your code to 500 milliseconds. It might seem more natural. So a quick final touch that I didn't want to add until I displayed how this worked in the network tab because it will add more network requests, but that is we can add some images to these results as well. So let's go to the components once again, look in the item component, and you'll see where I commented out some code. You could uncomment that, 
but remember to delete this code underneath that just defines the content right here. So starting on line 36 to 40, delete that code and then uncomment the larger block of code here from line 14 to 34. And now we'll start to bring in some thumbnails with these results, but that will show more requests because it has to request all of those thumbnails as it brings them in. So now you can see our results over here. If a thumbnail exists for the result, and you have to check for that because they do not all have thumbnails, but if it does exist, you will see a thumbnail in the results. So if we search for Dave once again, let's see who all has a picture. A lot of Daves have pictures. So that improves the app just a little bit. Now, I hope this has helped you learn more about what debouncing is and why it's necessary when you work with API requests that are tied to an input. Now, here's a challenge for you. Take this project and make it better. In the last few weeks, I've covered SWR, skeleton loaders, and React Suspense and error boundaries. They can all be applied to this simple app and it will make it better for your portfolio. You can also add your own CSS to make this project different from everyone else and that's a good idea. So add those features and share your results. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day and let's write more code together very soon.